Esther is an 85-year-old widow who lives on her own in an apartment in Chicago. Her well-meaning but rather annoying daughter, Celie, is trying to get her to move to an assisted living facility called Cedar Shores. Esther adamantly opposes her daughter's assisted living campaign, disparagingly refers to Cedar Shores as Bingoville. <laughs> the book had its origins in a short story that I wrote a number of years ago, and I called the story Bingoville, a title I shamelessly stole from Esther. <laughs> um, part of that story I'd like to read to you just a little bit. So. Every morning at 8.30 sharp, Esther and Lorraine speak by phone, though it would be easy enough to meet near the statue of St. Francis in the building's courtyard. Is this working? <laughs> One morning, Lorraine makes the call, the delicate expression the two employ for checking to see that the other has made it through the night. The next morning, Esther returns the favor, and so it will go until the day one of them doesn't answer, leaving the other to panic, wondering what to do. Dial 911, call Milo, the building's super, Today, while waiting for the rain to call, Esther peers through her living room window across the courtyard into the other apartments of the Devonshire Arms. The rain's curtains are drawn, yet Esther can picture her friend seated at the kitchen table with the Sun Times and her second cup of Sanka. When the phone finally rings, Esther picks up and without so much as a hello says, Seely kidnapped me. Esther, listen to me. Your own daughter cannot kidnap you. <laughs> Trust me, she did. <clears throat> Esther pauses, waiting for her friend to deliver the verbal equivalent of a pat on the arm. Lorraine sighs. <clears throat> to tell you the truth, I didn't sleep so well. I just said that I was kidnapped, and you're going on about a sleepless night. <laughs> Esther is about to hang up when Lorraine says, why don't you start at the beginning? <clears throat> Not now, Esther whispers. Later, I'll tell you at lunch. She has just finished reading the newspaper. The government is spying on ordinary citizens, listening in on phone conversations without a warrant. Do that again. So, <laughs> though she doesn't believe for a minute that anyone would bother eavesdropping on a couple of 85-year-old women, she isn't taking any chances. <laughs> what happened to her is nobody's business. She thinks about her grandson, Josh, who doesn't care who knows what. Last Sunday after dinner, he sat her down at his desk, punched some keys on his computer, and told her about something called a blog. Here, Nana, check it out. She read about Josh and his girlfriend, a sweet girl with a heart-shaped face and messy hair, about the things they did when he was away at college, about the smell of his sheets after sex. <laughs> Esther, who could remember changing Josh's diapers, stopped reading. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> no, she is not about to broadcast the details of her life to strangers. No blogs, no revelations for government spies. I'll tell you everything later, Esther says to Lorraine. Now tell me, what kept you up? Was it the music? I heard him playing again last night. <laughs>